Good afternoon to everyone tuning in right now. My name is Kara from First Metro Sec, and I'd like to welcome you guys to our besties, that's Beltran, Sai, and Tarog Investment Education Series. Today, we are now on our 20th episode for this series, and just that fast, we have tackled on various topics on investing and on trading. Still on our rainy season theme, our episode for this kind of gloomy Monday afternoon is entitled Investing for the Rainy Economic Seasons. So I'm sure that from just the title itself, you certainly now have an idea on what, we'll be, what we will be talking about today. Unfortunately, it's not just the weather that's rainy for us around here. It's also pretty rainy, even at times stormy in the stock market. But I'll leave all of the nitty gritty to our speaker later on, Marco Tarog, our business development officer. You may have seen him before. He conducts a lot of our in-house seminars, such as our basic education and stock trading, seminar and in various speaking engagements around the country and abroad. So as we wait for all other attendees to settle in, I'd like to invite everyone to participate in our Q&A later. If you have any questions in mind for Marco, whether in line with the topic or any curiosity if, that you have, feel free to send them in by using your webinar control panel, which you can access through the sidebar if you're on your desktops, or you can also swipe left if you're on your mobile phones. You can also gain access and download our one pager, which contains all the basic informa information that you will be needing when starting to invest or trade through your first MetroSec account. For our viewers who haven't opened an account with us yet, you can also find our account opening procedure on your control panel. For those of you who are new and have and not yet familiar with first MetroSec, we're inviting you to open an account now or perhaps later after the webisode. Metro Bank or PS Bank account holders, OFWs, and for our students, you can open an account for free. For all others, there is an, an initial deposit of 2,500 pesos, which will also become an investable amount once your account is activated. And for those of you who are watching Bessies for the first time ever, our weekly webinars are actually opportunities for you to win exclusive first MetroSec goodies. For today, you will get the chance to win our fan favorite, First MetroSec Invest Now, Black Later Shirt. We hope you guys stick till the very end of this webinar to be able to qualify for the giveaway. Also, please don't forget to join the growing First MetroSec Facebook community. There you can find the latest market news and updates, First MetroSec announcements and daily contests, and also connect with your fellow traders or investors. Just proceed to www.facebook.com slash groups slash First Metro Set to join. And now moving on to why we're all tuned in today, please welcome our speaker for investing during the rainy economic seasons, Marco Taro. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Marco Taro, Business Development Officer for First Metro Securities. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We are doing the latest Besties uh, uh, webisode together with the Presidential State of the Nation Address. And I'd like to thank all of you for spending this time with us. So I'm the guy on the left imita imitating my idol, the thinking man. Welcome to First Metrosec Besties. That's Beltran Sai Tarog Investment Education Series. Episode 20, Investing During Rainy economic seasons. We hope you took the time over the last few weeks to open an account with First Metro Securities free uh, of the minimum initial deposit if you are a Metro Bank account holder, free if you are a PS Bank account holder, free for students and OFWs. For those that haven't yet, you can start saving and investing with First Metro Sec by opening, opening an account in three easy steps. But before we go to step one, please ready your TIN and SSS number, any proof of address, sheet of bond paper with valid ID signed thrice, and any proof of bank account. So for step one, visit www.firstmetrosec.com.ph and click open an account. Step two, complete the online registration form. And when asked, how did you learn about us? We would very much appreciate if you could please type besties. And the last step, step three, upload your three documents online, namely the sheet of bond paper with valid ID signed thrice, proof of bank account, and proof of address. 
after uploading, you will be done. Congratulations. In a couple of days, you will have your very own online trading account with First Metro Securities. Today, our topic is investing during rainy economic seasons. And what do we mean by rainy economic season? By this, we mean the times when the Philippine economy may be facing challenges like possibly, hopefully not, but we could uh, see it down the road. We could see slower GDP growth. We could potentially see slowing corporate earnings growth or maybe even net losses in the case of some companies. It may mean less jobs being created. It may mean lower wage growth. It could also mean higher inflation, higher interest rates, and tightening of the money supply. So the presence of one or several of the aforementioned may be characteristics of an economic recession that uh, in some cases lead to a depression. So hopefully we're far off from that, but in case we do get to see this in our lifetime, at least we will be prepared. So in times like these, in rainy economic seasons, we as investors still have to make our money work hard for us, make our money make us more money, and thus it's even more crucial to carefully select investments to do the job. That is why in rainy economic seasons, we have to be able to identify good dividend paying stocks, companies that are stable even in the hardest of economic cycles. These companies are usually part of the services industry, which still see stable demand for its products and services during trying times. Examples of these industries could be utilities, telecoms, energy, power, maybe even food companies. Dividends, as we all know, are not guaranteed nor mandated to be given to shareholders. So we look for the companies that have a solid track record of growth and stability and thus are able to pay dividends. Selecting one or two dividend paying companies is good, but perhaps building an entire dividend paying portfolio could even be better. So now let's take a look at how to use the first Mentorsec platform to identify good dividend paying stocks. So from the landing page, Let's look at analytics, then click dividend yield. You will be redirected to the page which shows the 30 blue chip companies, the last traded price, the total dividends paid over the last two years, and the dividend yields. What may catch our attention first are actual dividends paid for 2019 and 2018, focusing on companies like uh, Globe and Meralco, which paid 45.5 pesos per share and 10.59 pesos per share, respectively. However, notice as well that to get to those dividends, one share for Globe would have to pay the share price. So one share for Globe was uh, 2,214 pesos and one share of Miralco was 379 pesos. Pretty pricey. So what's equally important, aside from looking at the actual dividends, is looking at the dividend yield over here at the right side of the page. What is a dividend yield? A dividend yield is the ratio between actual dividends paid and the share price. It is represented as a percentage and it gives you a better idea of the reward of the investment versus the cost of the investment. So if we are to take a look at the blue chips with the highest dividend yields, we can identify AP, Aboitis Power, DMC, I Holdings, ICT, International Container Terminal, Meralco, and if we scroll down, we can also include in that group uh, SCC, Semirara, Mining and Power Corp, and also PLDT, TEL. So these are the highest paying dividends for 2019. And among these, let's say we choose to look at uh, the highest paying one, and in this case, it's SCC, which, gave, uh, which has a dividend yield of 5.21% for 2019. So to know more about SEC from here, we can go to the research tab and click dividend history over here. At this page, we will see the breakdown 
of Semirara's dividend paying history, we can see that SEC likes to pay dividends once or twice a year. And in some years like 2014 and 2017, gave stock dividends or additional shares aside from giving cash dividends. So another page worth looking at is the valuation page under the research tab as well. At this page, at the valuation page, under the research tab, we can scroll down to find this particular section, the dividend info. For SEC, we can see the simplified history of dividends per share, dividend yield, and dividend payout ratio. So let's say in 2015, SEC gave four pesos per share. Same with 2016, 2017 gave 10 pesos per share, and in 2018, 2.25 pesos per share. So to know uh, how much reward that is as a percentage. So dividend yield basically in layman's terms is uh, for every one peso you invest, um, I used to buy uh, Semirara shares. Out of every 100 pesos you invest, the company gives back, uh, let's say in 2016, 12.31 pesos, 2017, 27.17 27 pesos, and in 2018, 9.76 pesos, right? So these are actually very good yields um compared to other um, blue chip names as for the dividend payout ratio all this means is that of all the net income the company is able to register for the year uh, about uh, less than one percent in most years are set aside to be given uh, as dividends to the shareholders so with the exception of 2014 uh, and 2017 most years um see the company give uh, less than 1% of their net income as dividends. So um, that's pretty good actually. And it says that uh, they can pay dividends, they are able to, and most of the earnings can be reinvested into the company for expansion. All right, so there it is. The zoomed in version of the dividend info section. So when looking at a specific stock or company and analyzing its dividend payment history, look at research page and specifically look at dividend history and valuation page. For building portfolios centered around dividend paying stocks, we should definitely view okay, the stock screen, one of the many research reports available to guide you. And this report is released every Wednesday morning around 9 to 9.30 a.m. To access the stock screen, once again, let's look at the research tab, FMS reports, and then click stock screen. Once the stock screen report is accessed, uh, you will see a pop-up window with the report and find the yield seeker section, which is usually the third portfolio presented. And this particular portfolio is made up of five securities or five stocks which represent companies that have a good track record of paying dividends. All right, so here, here Yield Seeker uh, is defined as high dividend uh, yields, uh, high dividend payout, uh, high dividend coverage ratio, and aside from stock appreciation, price appreciation, these stocks generate above average dividend yields. So once again, you can use the stock screen Yield Seeker page to build a dividend portfolio dividend paying portfolio, which will be most helpful during rainy economic seasons. Now to summarize, should the economy face challenges like slowing GDP, slowing corporate earnings, perhaps lower job growth, lower wage growth, high inflation, high interest rates, so many possible challenges an economy can face. And if it does face them, it will be worthwhile to consider building a dividend paying portfolio. Um, we should be ready to rebalance in that event. Uh, actually, even when the economy is doing very well, like it is right now, there's a good chance that uh, these dividend-paying stock companies, dividend-paying companies, can give us investors actually more rewards in the form of cash or stock dividends. And as always, there's the chance that the price can go up, or the, or we can experience capital appreciation along the way. So dividends are always a good idea, which is why we have to know how to identify good dividend paying stocks via the analytics page. And always remember to select the companies with high dividend yields. And check back every Wednesday to the research page, FMS reports, to see the stock screen 
specifically the yield seeker portfolio. So there you have it. Now we know what to do, how to invest during rainy economic seasons. And if you're going to do so, we hope you do it with the back-to-back -back best broker in the Philippines with the best online trading platform. We want you to learn from the best. Join our market education, in-house seminars. If you'd like to learn more about saving and investing, visit our website, www.firstmetrosec.com.ph and check our calendar of events. You can never go wrong learning from the best, whether you are from Luzon, Visayas, or Mindanao. Please do invite us over to your next company or school event because it's more fun learning about saving and investing with friends, classmates, and office mates. The good thing about our off-site market education program is that we conduct them absolutely free of charge. All right. So this has been your bestie, Marco. Thanking you once again for tuning in. If you'd like to get to know more about us, please visit and like our social media pages on Facebook, join our official Facebook group, and do follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. And that's a wrap for this latest episode, episode 20 of First Metrosec Besties, investing during the rainy season. Let me turn you over now back to Tara. Yay. Thank you for that very insightful discussion, Marco. I'm sure our viewers here today took away ideas on how they can strategize their way around their rainy economic seasons, especially investing in those high dividend pay yielding stocks. Now, as we head on to today's q and I would just like to remind you that you can send in your questions for Marco to answer. Send them in through the chat box and he will be entertaining these in a bit. Now, while we wait for the questions to start pouring in, let me just personally, personally ask you, Marco, what do you think of rainy days or like the rainy season? Well, actual weather or in yeah the actual market? the actual weather it doesn't i have to actually be like the rain i feel like whenever it's raining and uh i am at a sp specific place i am there for a reason that i'm meant to be where i am and it gives me a comforting feeling to know that um that uh that, that, that we are experiencing that kind of weather after all when you are in agriculture, when you're a farmer, rain is mostly considered to be a blessing for crops, right? So it's yeah. only here in the city that we really feel like rain is a burden because, of course, traffic is heavy. Yeah. It will take us a while to get home. But uh, um, if you are stuck in a place, make a friend, share a seat, you know, and uh, <laughs> hopefully you can Mingle develop relationships. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> nice, Andrew. That's a great perspective on the rainy season. So a lot of people actually believe that the rainy season are in all like unfor an unfortunate event, but it's not all bad. Like what Marco said, you guys, it's really all a matter of outlook, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so, all right, thank you for that, Marco. Are you now ready for the Q and A? Sure, I'll take some questions. Okay, ready or not, let um, me start with the first. So, question. guys, I see a bunch of questions here. If I'm not able to answer them now, please give me uh, a few days to get back to you. I promise I will get back to your questions. I'll try to answer everything, so, but for now, let's try mm -hmm. to. Let's just select keep a few. them pouring in, you guys. Okay, so let me start with the first question sent through email. Sure, sure. Which is a better factor to consider consider when choosing stocks, the yield itself or the fundamentals of the company? Well, depends on what kind of investor you are. Uh, actually, that's a that's an answer thrown out a lot. But uh, typically, traditionally, um, stocks were meant to be. Um, People would invest in stocks rather for the dividends that they pay out. You know? So there are certain companies, especially growth companies, that like to withhold dividends because they prefer to reinvest their um, their net income into expansion projects. So uh, I think what what's best um, you can do what you can best do is to consider a combination of both. Um, consider, of course, the fundamentals of the company because if the company can't actually make a profit and they can't expand, then they won't be able to set aside a portion of their net income to pay out as, as dividends. So I think you should equally consider both. Um, don't just buy a stock just because it can buy, it can pay dividends. Also look at where they're coming from and how the company is making it. So um, if you are the, the type of investor who prefers companies that grow faster than the index, these companies may not necessarily pay dividends, but then again, they can reward you through capital appreciation. So to simplify the answer, um, take a look at both and uh, take a look at the, the history of the company, the prospects, and the current financial health of the company. 
All right, thank you for that, Marco. Another question actually from the same person, where can I know about the dates when it comes to dividend distribution? Dividend distribution, uh, usually uh, we will keep you informed by the research page. Uh, for companies that like to pay dividends, for us investors, uh, what we are more concerned with are two dates. First is the dividend declaration date. Company may announce that they will be paying dividends. This is usually done around April or May at the end of their fiscal year. Um, and second is the X date. So um, so the, a company will declare dividends and then they will say that the X date is maybe three weeks away. And the idea here is that um, the latest time that you should buy a stock to be able to uh, receive dividends is one day before X date and during X date you can actually sell the stock already and you'll still be entitled to dividends. The rest um, will follow soon. There's recording date which is usually handled by operations and then there is the actual uh, cash delivery date. So um, these dates are usually announced by the company and uh, we will make sure to inform you of these important dates as they come uh, as they are made available by the specific company. So check back at the research page, uh, company news uh, every now and then. All right, so thank you for that, Marco. We can now um, accommodate questions sent through the chat. First question we have here, would you recommend the investors to acquire property dividends? Um, it depends on your preference, actually. Me, I prefer, of course, cash. Uh, some people prefer stock, some people prefer um, capital appreciation so it really depends on your sensitivities and requirements so um, of course as long as you are rewarded um, it should be okay all right thank you for that marco we have another question here are preferred stocks also considered in the portfolio oh it's good uh, to make a distinction so when i give the basic education and stock trading seminar i usually make a distinguishment i distinguish uh, common shares from preferred shares in that uh, well in common shares you have voting rights and in preferred shares um, most of the time you don't have voting rights for common shares dividends are not guaranteed and while they are actually basically there's an option for preferred shares uh, that aren't guaranteed most uh, about 99 percent of them do have guaranteed uh, dividends some of them are even cumulative no? so um, uh, preferred shares are not as traded um compared to common stocks precisely for the behavior that they have good dividend payment history they are entitled to dividends um and thus they are in traded because the ones who are holding them don't want to let them go because they do pay dividends so uh, if you are the type of investor who prefers safety then uh, over reward in the realm of stocks of course preferred shares preferred stocks are um, something that you would consider over common shares so yes, I would say um, preferred shares are included or can be included in your dividend paying portfolio because the dividends sort of behave like a regular interest payments. In fact, in my previous job when managing a portfolio, some uh, funds that we would manage would purposely buy preferred shares instead of uh, bonds um, because number one, the preferred share prices don't fluctuate as much and secondly, um, the by nature of them being a, a stock as opposed to being a bond, they uh, give higher um, dividends or they have, they have a higher yield compared to bonds. So yes, I would say preferred shares or preferred stocks should be part of your dividend paying portfolio whenever you can get your hands on them. All right. Thank you for that, Marco. Any advice on companies to invest in that doesn't pay regular dividend, dividends or that doesn't declare regular dividends in cash or stock? Uh, my advice would be to analyze those stocks using both fundamental and technical analysis. By fundamental analysis, check the health of the company, the financial statements, the assets, liabilities, the earnings history, profit growth, check the ratios of course, uh, also check uh, how it's performing within the industry it's operating in, check if the economy is able to support that particular company and its prospects, and for technical, the technical analysis side, it would be good to study and review the price action just so that you know that you're not buying the stock when it's in a downtrend. You're picking it up either at consolidation or when it's in an uptrend to minimize your risk. So a combination of fundamental analysis and technical analysis would be what we would advise you use to um, 
invest in companies that don't pay regular dividends. All right. Thank you for that, Marco. We have another question here. Next month is August. Is it going to be a rainy season for stocks next month, especially August is ghost month? Traditionally speaking, ghost month is a month where we see less trading um, because of, of, of course, the idea that uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a good time to do business. However, I believe in 2018, August proved to be a very good month for stocks. In fact, I believe the stock market was up last August. I'll have to review that. But uh, um, when when there are cold hard facts and cold and, and solid data to support uh, um, support and highlight good things happening with the economy and the stock market, you can't um, not be a part of it just because of uh, if you believe in ghost month. So. Um, like uh, as far as we as we see, uh, we are expecting the, the Philippine economy to see a net, another 25 uh, basis point rate cut, which should really support the the stock market. Inflation, as you know, is low, and it will continue to be low in the second half of 2019. Uh, the peso is continuing to strengthen or or find a lot of support at around the 50 to 51 peso level. And uh, we expect GDP to pick up after posting uh, a tempered 5.7% in the first quarter of 2019. So I think um, the only rainy days we'll see is the actual weather, not so much in the stock market for August. But I could be wrong. So um, time will tell. So there. All right. Next question we have here. What is the difference between peso and dollar denominated securities? Well, uh, the answer is actually in the question, I believe. So the peso denomination uh, means that the asset is uh, traded or sold in the peso currency and dollar denominated uh, securities is uh, sold or traded in dollar denominated securities. Of course, um, the next question actually, or what you may uh, be more concerned or what you could consider more is uh, who is issuing or where where is the security based? So there are uh, dollar denominated uh, Philippine securities. These are called ROPs. So so they are basically bonds in dollars, in the do dollar denomination. So of course there are the U.S. Treasuries, uh, which are also dollar denominated, but uh, ROPs have a higher yield than U.S. Treasuries because of course our credit rating, the Philippines credit rating, is not as high as the U.S. So it's a higher it's a riskier asset. And therefore, it uh, um, it should compensate uh, investors for for that that type of exposure. So, um, if you, if you mean something else, please do send in the next question. I'll be happy to try and answer it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And next question: Is it better to? I guess we have around two more questions. Is that okay? Sure. 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 Is it better to invest in mutual funds than stocks, or both? Um. Is it better to invest in mutual funds than stocks? If you're the type of investor who is busy, that uh, wouldn't mind um, uh, wouldn't mind assigning the task of uh, managing your portfolio on a tactical and strategy basis to a professional fund manager. And if you prefer the safety of diversification, uh, then yes, mutual funds would be a better option for you, if you're the type of investor who is good at analyzing a business or would like to really um, be exposed to a specific um, industry or a specific business, or if you trust the management of a company, then stocks may be the way to do so. Um, so I would say, I would, me personally, I have a little bit in mutual funds and a little bit in stocks because uh, I, I travel a lot. I'm, I am asked to do or deliver presentation so I don't have as much time to to monitor uh, a stock portfolio as a fund manager would um, so I only keep a maximum of five stocks in my port my portfolio and I keep a number of mutual funds to take advantage of both diversification and the fund managers uh, expertise so the question of is it better it really depends on your preference I, I know some people I know some folks who um, to invest and trade directly in stocks and don't like to do mutual funds because they don't want to be exposed to the management fee that a mutual fund has. So again, it's a matter of preference. Uh, and yes, you're right. It says here, depending on your risk tolerance, 
I would say, of course, stocks are riskier, direct investment in stocks are riskier than mutual funds. But then again, it's up to you uh, and your your sensitivities, your how much time you can dedicate to managing your stock portfolio. So there. Okay, thank you for that, Marco. And our last question, can we buy preferred shares in the first MetroSec platform? Actually, I took a look at the codes page in the platform. There are a number of um, preferred shares that are traded on the secondary market. So they've gone past the initial offering and are now in the secondary market, meaning if you're going to buy, you're going to buy from an existing shareholder. So yes, you can actually buy preferred shares in the first MetroSec platform, but usually they will be sold to you at a premium because then again, uh, preferred shares have uh, the dividend uh, characteristic, paying characteristic uh, every year, you know, and they have usually a fixed dividend yield or a fixed dividend rate. So uh, if you're going to buy preferred shares, be ready to buy them at a premium. And of course, mm -hmm. make sure that uh, you still find yourself investing in something with a good dividend yield. So yes, yeah, so you can indeed buy preferred shares in the first MetroSec platform, as long as there are those willing to sell it to you. So again, it's a marketplace. Um, if you look at a particular preferred share, um, you have to check on the codes page. But yes, you can buy preferred shares on the first MetroSec platform. All right, thank you for that, Marco. And that is it for our Q&A. Thank you everyone for participating and sending in your questions. So if you have any additional questions in mind, just send them in through our email, that's events at firstmetrosec.com.ph, and Marco will still do his best to accommodate your questions. And once again, we hope that through this episode, you were able to take you were able to take away learnings on how you can strategize your way around the rainy season in the market. A journey, a journey we at First Metro Sec hope to share with you. Thanks, everyone. Now, before we end today's episode, it's time for our webinar giveaway. Our item up for grab today is our exclusive fan favorite first Metro Sec Invest Now blank later shirt for our ambitious investors out there. Fill in the blank of the sentence with your very own goals. So how about you, Marco? How would you complete your sentence? Invest now, blank later. Oh, for me, uh, invest now, invest later, invest all the time. So I love investing. 24 seven. 24 seven, yeah. And I don't mean just in stocks, right? So yeah. I mean all types of assets, conservative mutual funds, money market funds, bond funds. So depending on on the on what the market gives us, right? So uh, invest now, invest later. Invest now, invest always. Invest always. <laughs> yeah, so for our viewers, here's how you can join. All you have to do is take a screenshot of the next screen, post it on your Facebook wall, along with the caption answering this very easy question about today's topic. What is your investing strategy for the rainy economic seasons? We're encouraging you guys to be adventurous and creative with your answers. Go as specific as you want, be bold as much as you like. Just please don't forget to tag us at First Metro Securities and make your post public. We will be giving the shirt to the best answer that we receive. So good luck and once you guys are ready, you may take a screenshot now. And that is a wrap, everyone. Thank you for squeezing us in your very busy Monday schedules. We know that some of you are probably all already on your way home, perhaps stuck in traffic or still doing overtime in the office. And we appreciate that you were able to share your time with me, Marco, and also, and also with the First MetroSec team. We hope that through Marco's discussion, we were able to help you take the next step in achieving your goals, whatever they may be. Now, before we bid you bye, we'd like to invite you to our upcoming seminars and events before the month ends. Head over to our calendar of seminars posted on our website to see if there's a first MetroSec event around you. We will also be having our basic education on stock trading or best seminar in the Mass Marato, Quezon City this weekend. And that will also be led by our speaker today, Margo. So if you're interested to join, just send us an email at registration at firstmetrosec.com.ph or register through our website. To get up to date with our latest events and seminars and everything in between, like, follow, and subscribe to our social media channels. We're on your favorite social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Viber, or, or visit our website. 
So that is it. This has been your host, Kara, along with our speaker, Marco, wishing you a happy Monday. See you again next week. Always bring your payong and don't let the gloomy weather get to you. Thank you, everyone. And Thank as you. always, with First Metro Securities, it's hashtag your, your future first. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers.